the worker has no defense. Unite, there are millions of you. Separately, you're nothing. United, you can change the face of the world. But we have a union. We recognize no union but our own. Onward to a better future. Join the Communist Party. Look at you. Always waiting for tips. Always your hands out like beggars. Number 11. And when you get the tips, the management takes 50%. But do you get 50% of the profits? No. Number three. Good afternoon, Monsieur Duval. Good afternoon. Monsieur Duval's coffee. Monsieur Duval's anisette, quick. <laughs> the anisette, Monsieur Duval. Three drops. The sugar, Monsieur Duval. One lump. Uh, Monsieur Duval's brandy. Congratulations, Monsieur Duval. For what? The interview in the newspaper. Look at that finger. Please, not now. Now look at it. Capitalists and little fingers, they're becoming inseparable. It's the sign of a plutocrat. A gesture of contempt for those they exploit. Monsieur Duval's brandy. Monsieur, I'm sorry. Forgive us, Monsieur Duval. You're discharged. But I assure you... Turn your apron in at once. You've displaced the Café Louis XV. Are you idiot? Oh, no, Paul, you can't kill a man for that. I'm not killing him. He must be a communist. They're a dangerous bunch. Dangerous? Huh. All they can do is sing the international off key. Scratch your head, and I'll come yellow. Mr. Duval, it's you. No, I'm at my bank. If you'll hurry, you may catch me there. You, Andre Dorley, hiding in my own wife's apartment. You're guilty of this. As guilty as if you had pulled the trigger. You and those Bolshevik newspapers of yours. My dear Duval, my papers aren't Bolshevik. They're liberal. I admit we advocated an investigation of your banks. But I deny that we ever suggested an assassination. However, it's a very good idea, perhaps, in the next edition. You admit it! You admit it! Will you kindly stop pointing that hideous bandage at me? I'm having my coffee. Why, Maurice, have you been biting your fingernails again? Oh, Marianne, haven't you a heart? Don't you realize that three hours ago I was practically assassinated? Oh, dear. Doretta, coffee for Mr. Val, strong and black. He's convalescing from an assassination. Where were you assassinated, dear? Oh, scarcely a stone's throw from here. Oh, well, I haven't seen this afternoon's paper. Why didn't you tell me about it, Andre? Didn't want to bore you. Oh. Assassination. A bullet fired by a crazy waiter who escaped, hit his coffee cup, and a little splinter of crockery got his finger. Why, it's a mere scratch. <laughs> Gee, he's disappointed because I wasn't killed. Now that you've informed Madame of the sad fact that you're not dead, well, what's detaining you? Now, just a minute, Andre. I'm his wife, you know. And you have no right to give him orders like that. Maurice, go home. I need him here? Yes. Everything is clear to me now. You didn't start divorce proceedings because you wanted to own a travel agency. There is your travel agency. Dorlay, the Bolshevik. Now look, look, I am neither in love with the travel agency nor Andre. The agency is merely a business which makes me independent of you. And Andre is only an old and trusted friend. Yes, the kind of a trusted friend the husband usually shoots. Why don't you go home? Even if it's only to get your gun. Now look, why don't you both go home, huh? Good oh. heavens, what's that? What's happening? It's the police, they're shooting at someone. Tell them to stop it. Tell them I said so. You police down there. Stop shooting. Monsieur Duval commands it. Can you see? Stop. Oh, madame, here's a policeman. Excuse me, madame. 
madame, monsieur. Official business. I'm after a fugitive. Fugitive? We suspect he's taken in the roof. Will you be so good as to show me the roof, monsieur? I'll take you. So you're familiar with my wife's roof? Only from a distance, unfortunately. Wait a minute. Uh, who is this fugitive? Some fellow that shot at a banker and missed him. Oh, they're after the assassin, but the assassin's after me, and it's all... My fault, I know. If I hadn't left you, then... You'd be home, and I'd be home having my coffee instead of at cafes where both of each can shoot at me. That's right. Come home, Mary Ann. It's so empty without you. Empty? With 25 servants and four secretaries? Oh, really, Maurice? I need you. Please come home. Home? 118 rooms. I was lonely and lost in every one of them. <laughs> now, I'm not ancient enough to be exhibited in a museum, yet. Is that boar still trying to parley a scratch finger into an assassination? I won't be insulted in my own apartment. Your wife's apartment. All right, I won't be insulted in my wife's apartment. Oh. The police are playing a return engagement. They know their duty. They're trying to protect us. <laughs> They're shooting at us. Whoa! It's a revolution. You can thank yourself for this, Dorley. You and your papers have aroused the masses. And the police department has been won over by Moscow. Don't be frightened. Which way to the back stairs? Officer, I ask you to do your duty. They're shooting at me. They were shooting at me. I thought the police were trained to shoot criminals, not each other. They didn't recognize my uniform in the dark. They mistook me for the fugitive. Oh. Which way to the back stairs? So watch your hurry, officer. Give the fellow a sporting chance. Yeah, I'm giving him all the chance he deserves. Give him murderer? Chance? Murderer. He's no murderer. All he did was to scratch the finger of an overstuffed sausage. But unfortunately, a politically important overstuffed sausage. Where are the back stairs? Officer. Look at me. Why? Look at me. Officer. He is the man you have just called an overstuffed sausage. Incredible. What's incredible? That even a bad marksman could have missed. There's so much of you. Does anybody know where the back stairs are? I'll show you. So, you're familiar with my wife's back stairs, too. <laughs> so sorry, officer. Just a family quarrel. I'll keep it a secret. I won't put it in my report. <laughs> Thank you. The back stairs, please. Certainly. I'll show you. You acting to the house. If she goes through the divorce, I'll name you as correspondent. I'll work very hard to deserve that honor. Where is he? Who? The criminal. There he is. No, no, the man on the roof. Well, that was the man who attempted to murder Monsieur Duval the banker. Where is he? I'm Monsieur Duval the banker. Is it possible? It's indisputable. Then you didn't recognize your assailant when he was here in this very room? I never saw the man who shot at me. And why should I suspect a policeman of being an assassin? <laughs> Stop, Sausage. He certainly had a great gift for description. <laughs> now you're allowed him to escape. The house is surrounded, monsieur. He will not escape. Officer, who is he? A dangerous agitator, madame. A communist. Oh, I knew it! A communist! One of Dorley's subscribers, no doubt. Sorry to have troubled you. Oh, it's quite all right. Uh, by the way, how did he get hold of a policeman's uniform? Pierre. Again, sorry to have troubled you. That's all right. Good night. Doretta, turn down my bed. I'm tired. Yes, madame. I am most grateful for a very entertaining evening. And now will you both get the devil out of here? No, you need protection. On a night like this, you wouldn't be safe in your own bed. Mary Ann, you need me? Scream once. You're very brave. I begin to like you. Get him out of here. <laughs> If you insist upon staying, don't you think you'd be more comfortable over there on the couch? Get him out of here. Good night. Well, I'm going to be going. Going my way? You going mine? I hope to see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. 
Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thanks, Toretta. Good night. Good night, madam. You'll be a widow now. I'm a crack shot. Oh, I see. May I suggest this is not a house party? Sorry, but this chase made me miss my dinner. Well, that's too bad. Why did you shoot at my husband? You wouldn't understand. Well, I can try. All right, then I'll try to explain. Every day, your husband used to come to the Cafe Stalin. Where? All right, all right, Cafe Louis the 15th. When we take over the Cafe Stalin. Every day. Whew, perfume. Stand back a little. Certainly. That's far enough. Every day your husband came to the cafe. It was hard enough to see everybody bowing and crawling before that fat symbol of fascism. It was much harder to listen to his cowardly attacks on the new social order. Bravo, bravo. Now, why did you shoot at him? Every day, your husband had come in for his coffee. Mm -hmm. Every day, I was forced to watch this procedure. And how did he hold his cup? Not like a working man, honestly and firmly, but... But curling his little finger. Right. Curling his little finger like this. It was a slap in the face of the whole labor movement. It was gas. I couldn't stand it. Of course it. you couldn't Everything stand. went black. You mean red. Stop sabotaging me. I made up my mind. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's all clear to me now. That little finger. That's why I couldn't stand him. It started on our honeymoon. That's it. The whole thing started on our honeymoon. It drove me into a nervous breakdown. I... You're a capitalist. You can afford a nervous breakdown. I had to shoot. They're the back stairs. Good luck. Don't think I don't appreciate what you've done. When the revolution raises you to my level, I'll say thanks. Accumulation is, moreover, self-accelerating. The means of production are more efficient and highly mechanized. Highly... The law of motion of capitalism enabling the plot to curve within certain limits. 
simple rules for beginners. Very simple. It's only me. The place is surrounded by police. I had to come back. But I heard a shot. Champagne. Uh, I looked for some beer, but there wasn't any. Get out of here, you anarchist. Look, don't insult me. I am not an anarchist. The difference between anarchism and communism... How did you get back in here, anyway? I once organized the locksmiths. Anarchism is people without government. And communism is government without people. Now go on, get out of here. Do I have to repeat myself? I just told you the place was surrounded. Look, there are six other apartments in this building. <laughs> yeah, but this is the safest. They know I'm not here. Must the distribution of wealth start with my icebox? Was the chicken created only for the rich? Is everything around here perfumed? Most people smoke, smoke tobacco. You smoke rose petals. Being shot at close range isn't my idea of a joke. How do you feel about it? <laughs> How many people have you shot? What am I, a bookkeeper? Nauseating. No huh? The way you eat. Ooh. I suppose you'd rather see me eat like this. Well, it might help. Bourgeois affectation. Either put down that gun or stop eating that chicken. Well, your word of honor? Uh-huh. Until you finish eating the chicken. You know I won't break my word. Huh. Women of your class have a sense of honor and everything except love affairs. It gives you a fake feeling of virtue. Don't you keep your word? That's up to Moscow. Uh, I guess I'd better not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'd better. Smart, aren't you? You make everything so simple. Just what do you mean? That's one of your boyfriends. If he doesn't receive an answer, he'll think something's wrong and call the police. Answer it. Smile. Hello? Hello, Marianne. Well, I got rid of him. <laughs> now you've spoiled everything. I was asleep, and it was such a lovely dream. Uh-huh. It was of you. Oh, no, no, Andre, not tonight. No, first let me finish the dream, and then I'll know definitely. Yes. Good night, Andre. <laughs> oh, he sure gives up easy. Why don't you go and pick at him? Must be the mating season. Hello? <laughs> now you spoiled everything. I was asleep. It was such a lovely dream. I... <laughs> it was of you. No, no, Maurice, not tonight. Now first let me finish my dream and then I'll know definitely. <laughs> Good night, Maurice. Terrorist. You're rapidly forcing me into bigamy. I know, I know. Comes the revolution and you'll organize bigamy.
so nothing will disturb the finish of that dream. Go to bed. With a gunman in my bedroom? <laughs> Listen, if I shoot, it'll be in the line of duty. Nothing personal. No wonder you have such dreams. If you don't get out of here, I'll scream. I scream very loudly. I shall count three. One, two... Ouch! You cannibalistic cannibal! Tis enough that you exploit us, you have to eat us, too. Ouch! <laughs> Scream, I, I promise. I simplified everything. amuse themselves. But when they start filling their apartments with naked assassins, I give my notice. Use your head, Doretta. He's the fake policeman of last night. Oh. Oh. The police still have the blocks around it. I'll have to stay. Hey, you see, Doretta, he has to stay. Well, I don't. You'll earn the gratitude of the party. I'm no communist. I work hard for my savings, and I'm splitting with nobody. Revolution or no revolution. The Redder, hand me my robe. The revolution is coming. I want to be properly dressed for it. Where's the bathtub? I thought communists never bathe. Fascist propaganda. Where's the tub? In there. Quickly, call the police. Um... I'll have to get your word of honor again while I'm in the tub. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all out of words of honor. Well, if the police drag me out of here, it'll be without any clothes on. That ought to get a crowd to your front door. I don't care how they drag you out of here, just as long as they drag you out. All right, we'll start with the blanket. <laughs> no, no, I promise. 
her to. <laughs> Lucky for me, the difference between the sexes is so important to you upper classes. I was under the impression everyone gave it some thought. We don't. Our minds are only on the struggle for power. Oh, how dull. No mama proletarians, no papa proletarians. Don't be a Trotskyite. There'd be plenty of children. The revolution increases the birth rate. <sighs> what a relief. For a moment, I was worried. Huh. Loretta, that, that must be one of our suitors. Oh, if I ever get out of this thing, I'm going to enter a monastery. Oh, that, that means a nunnery. Stop sabotaging me. Uh, go on, answer it, Doretta, and, and tell him I'm in the tub. Oh, oh, madame. All right, all right. Tell him anything you like, only tell him something. I'm a hairdresser, not a plumber. You have the tools, haven't you? Yes. You have a union card, haven't you? Yes. Well, that makes you a plumber. Here. Plumbers? No, I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> Funny fellow. <Yeah. laughs> Come on. How about some breakfast, comrade? Breakfast will be served when Madame returns. Returns? Where is she? She told me to tell you not to be frightened. She'll be back soon. I won't wait. I want a steak, thick and rare. A steak for breakfast? Loaf of bread, french fried potatoes, and plenty of coffee. Hmm, for a comrade, you get plenty of orders. Comes the revolution, there'll be no bosses but you. You'll have to assassinate yourself. And lots of butter. Huh? Good morning. I'd like to buy a complete outfit for a gentleman. Uh, my father. It's a surprise. Or something conservative, madame. Well, no. For his age, he's quite radical. I heartily approve of him. <laughs> I myself have pioneered for gear things for men. Oh, really? Uh, shall we start with the shirt? Well, if it's customary to start there, yes, please do. Now, here is a shirt with courage. I'm rather partial to this shirt because it breaks tradition. Oh. The tails are two inches shorter. Oh, it's 
Isn't that going a little bit too far? Oh, no, madame. Not in this material. It is a bashful material, perhaps, but it will not shrink. Oh. It will resist the most determined laundry and take anything your father can give. <laughs> you don't my father. Uh, and now, may I uh, show you the suits? Oh, yes, please do. This way. Thank you. More butter, Dwyer. Do all communists eat like you? Hmm. In the days of plenty, provide for the lean days ahead. More butter. That's Madame returning. What is it? I've come to fix your plumbing. There's nothing wrong with it. How do you know? Are you a plumber? You can't come in here. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Come on, Mickey! Come on, Paul! Well, I never thought I'd be glad to see you. Excellent masquerade. Is she one of us? No, no, but there's no danger from her. Well, you've got her terrorized. Only slightly. I'm hoping for improvement. Good. Hmm. Would you please remove yourself? Our conversation is private. I told you she was safe. Is he planning to move in, too? He's planning on moving me out. Excuse me. Where are you going? I want to get him a steak. Hmm. Good food here. No. Tell me, were you worried? Certainly I was worried. I expected help last night. Well, you know the rules for emergency procedure. We had a meeting. I suppose there was a debate all night as to whether the rescue committee should be appointed or elected. In the meantime, I might have been dead. Oh, you know, the, the, the... I know, I know. It's the party that's important, not the individual. I am the chairman of the rescue committee. Now I'm really worried. What are the plans? Well, the plans, yeah. <laughs> Madame Duval's apartment. Yes, madame. Certainly, madame. Now concentrate, comrade. Your safety depends on this. Now here, just to the left of the front door to the apartment, is a straight corridor. Uh -huh. You follow it to the end. And then, there's another door. See? One door. Twenty-two. And there's a back staircase. Two left-hand turns, and there is a cellar door. Uh -huh. Eight stone steps lead down to the cellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from the cellar, there's a door from the away. alley. What about the police in the alley? Oh, I, I didn't think of that. Hey, what are you doing? Madame's orders. You listen to me. 42. Have Francois bring his garbage wagon. In the basement, you'll find a large garbage can. You'll carry it out. Yes, yes, yes. But what about you? I'll be in the can. Good. Yes, madame. Headquarters says he's still hiding somewhere near here. Uh, here, I'll take this. Thank you. You'll really have a chance to laugh. <laughs> Devil's Island's much funnier than this. Devil's Island? Yes, I hope you'll come to see me there. You'll love Devil's Island. A lot of comic characters walking around in chains. Bring your friends, make it a party. We'll do our best to entertain you. Well, if he goes, he'll be the best dressed man on Devil's Island. Well, what's this for? For you. At least the place will look less like a police station. And uh, by the way, these are for you too. Teamsters delight. So you'll stop complaining looking rose petals. <laughs> I can't wear these. 
Why not? Why, there's no braid on the vest. Can't look like a banker without braid on the vest. You better take this back. If I'm caught in the house without any braid on the vest, you'll never live down the disgrace. Look, look, look. What are these? Socks. They go on your feet, inside your shoes. Kind of thin, aren't they? Uh-huh. Silk. Oh, yes. That's the stuff those worms are forced to produce for the rich. You're wearing silk. In my predicament, Lenin will do the same. Well, it hasn't killed you, has it? Don't push my sense of decency too far. Why, comrade, decency is a bourgeois affectation. Oh, madame, please don't push him too far. Too late. She's already pushed. Wait, wait, wait. Look, these aren't silk. Just a newspaper man to interview Madame about a dream. Don't Hello, Marianne. Hello, Andre. How, how nice to see you. Um, Andre, you know, last night after you called, the police kept me awake all night long. Oh, that's They kept it. blowing their whistles and, and changing guards and shouting right under my window. It was awful. Well, I'll order an editorial on the police for tonight's paper. Oh, that's very sweet of you. You know, there's no reason for the police to hang around here. Why, that coffee cup killer's miles away. Why don't you run along right now and arrange to have the police removed, huh? I'll do it from here. You are a eavesdrop. How can you know anything if you don't? The door there. Sean's at the back door. Come on, come on, get in here. Get in there. Get in, get in, get in. If this keeps up, you'll have to put hot and cold running water in here for me. There's your steak. Now look, Inspector, there's no reason for the police to stay. The man is miles from here. Why, it's a waste of manpower. While crimes are being committed elsewhere, the police... All right, Terry. The police are being withdrawn. Oh, thank you, Andre. Now I'll be able to sleep tonight. You know, I don't as a rule go around saving people sleep for them, but when I do, I like to do it on a commercial basis. And you shall have your reward. Marianne. In heaven. <laughs> and now, Andre, if you'll forgive me. I'll... All right. Uh, thank you. Wait a minute. There's something wrong here. R wrong? Why, why? There's nothing wrong oh, here. Oh, yes, there is. Why, no, there isn't. Why do you say that? You know you never let me go without serving you one of Doretta's cocktails. Oh. I'll get it. Oh, no, Andre, I'm sorry, but it's one very rule in this house that guests do not mix their own cocktails. Now, now you stay right here, and, and I'll get it for you. I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Doretta, what's that? The steak, madame. Steak? Yes, the steak. You don't have to emphasize it. It's large enough to speak for itself. Madame. Yes? He complained of the size of the last one. You've got enough here for six people. Only if the other five don't eat. Good day, young man. Good day, madame. Quickly, Doretta, we must fix the Chardonnay's cocktail, the shaker. Oh. I'm exercising all the faculties of a restrained and civilized gentleman, but if I don't get my cocktail, I'm going to thrash the two of you. We're mixing it now. Doretta, some ice. What's this? You kind of doormat? Uh, well, my, my neighbors have gone to the country and they left the St. Bernard for me to take care of. That's his dinner. Well, he must be a big brute. <laughs> One of the biggest. Is he gentle? Uh, only when he's well fed. Madame, the doorbell. I'll answer it. Come along to the living room, Andre. The red will bring your cart here. You can't come out. There's a gentleman in the house. Yes, I know it. I'm a St. Bernard. Yeah. Yes? Madame, something ghastly has happened. I made the sleeves too short. Well, now, that's quite all right. Would you mind coming back tomorrow? I have a guest. Oh, oh don't mind me. When Madame gave me the measurements and I wrote them down, I almost took a nine for a seven. That's very interesting. It's all right. I, I forgive you. Oh, thank you, Madame. And now, will you please direct me to the suit? Oh, the suit. Suit? Well, if you'll tell me what this is all about, perhaps I'll be able to help you. Well, oh, you see, he's he's just made me a suit. He's my dressmaker. If you'll come right this way, I'll I'll show you. It's in there. Marianne, you may be interested to know that I've reserved a table at the Parakeet Club for 7 o'clock tonight. Oh? I'm taking a lady. Well, I hope for your sake she's lovely. You are. 
<laughs> Thank you, Andre. I'd like very much to go. Good. Oh, my my dressmaker must have stuck himself with a pin. He he always screams at the sight of his own blood. Oh. Uh, pardon me, Andre. Wait a minute. What happened? Your father bit me. Uh, no, thank you. Andre, do be a dear. Run along now and call for me at seven. At quarter of seven. <laughs> Very well. Quarter of seven. And don't you wear that silver gown. My self-control has its limits. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Madame. See that that door is locked. The police are being removed so he can get out of here safely now. Yes. Oh, life would be so simple without men. Perhaps too simple, madame. Well, isn't he pretty? I'm only wearing these things temporarily. Well, at least you're temporarily pretty. Here, let me have a look at you. Ah. I knew gray was your color. Oh, look, he's pretty from the back, even. Mm, he must be growing. His arms are too long. The okay. sleeves are too short. Well, if you hadn't taken a bite out of the clerk, he'd have fixed them for you. Let me see something. Look, he stopped discriminating against silk socks. I don't want a false note in this disguise. Dis <laughs> what are you disguised as? A banker. <laughs> Besides what Madame said about him, he's crazy. Crazy? The butcher almost caught me that last time. Maybe I'm going to make that closet the next time. If he or any other tradesman sees me now, they'll think I'm a banker. You a banker? Oh, no, no, never. Not even if I bought you the braid for your vest, you couldn't be a banker. I couldn't. Uh -uh. Huh. What's so difficult about being a banker? Take a letter, Miss Jeanette. <clears throat> to the uh, President of the United States. The White House, Washington, D.C., USA. Dear Mr. President, in reply to yours of the 21st instant, I wish... You have very nice hands, Miss Jeanette. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Mm -hmm. I uh, hope we haven't been working you too hard, Miss Jeanette. Oh, no, monsieur. I've been very happy here. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. After all, we should all be one big happy family here. <clears throat> you know, I'm a working man myself. Yes, yeah, started right in at the bottom. With only one bank. You know, Miss Jeanette, the opportunities here are unlimited for everyone. Mm -hmm. You live alone, Miss Jeanette? Oh, no, monsieur. I live with my mother. Oh. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Where were we? <clears throat> uh, the uh, 21st instant. Oh, yes, 21st instant. Dear Mr. President, I... Uh, do you like to work in the country, Miss Jeanette? Monsieur, the President of the United States is awaiting his reply. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Frank, in reply to yours of the 21st instant, let the President of the United States wait. Please, Monsieur. Don't be afraid when I touch you, little girl. You're like a child to me. But your wife? Yes, yeah, she's beautiful but cold, without a soul. Like all my other expensive possessions. I need someone who understands how simple and sweet I am. Oh. That underneath this, I'm just a boy. I'll give you everything. If that's not enough, I'll foreclose some mortgages and give you more. Well, what's so difficult about being a banker? Nothing. It seems simple enough. You know, you're very flexible. Flexible? Maybe I've been wasting time. <laughs> Maybe we both have. After all, you hid me, you defied the police. Deep inside you somewhere, there must be a revolutionary spirit. Maybe it just needs somebody like me to bring it out. Latino rushed it. I told him Madame was going to a masked ball tonight. How did he bring that past the police? If they saw that, I'm trapped. The police are gone, monsieur. last I can get out of this middle-class prison. Aren't you going to finish converting me? I've got more important work to do than wasting my time playing games. Have you forgotten they're looking for a man in a policeman's uniform? The 
So I'd rather be caught as a policeman than as a banker. I'm going to use your bedroom for the last time. Oh, madame, he's leaving us. I cannot understand your hesitation with reference to the rate of interest. Do you like to work in the country, Miss Louise? Hello. Your wife, Monsieur. <clears throat> Marianne? Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Yes, my dear. What? You just saw my assassin in the backyard. What are the police doing? Gone. Well, I'll attend to that immediately. Well, goodbye. If I've caused you any trouble, I... I know. It was not as an individual, but as the party. Correct. Oh, won't you stay for lunch? Doretta's prepared it for you. Lunch. Steak Bordelaise with fried potatoes, cauliflower au gratin, and green salad with roquefort dressing. I better go. Oh, Mr. Hunt, the police are back. Monsieur, the police are back. <laughs> oh, yes, madame. Silk pajamas, size 42. Thank you, madame. sit here alone all night, waiting. It's only three o'clock. If this place wasn't surrounded by the police, I wouldn't stay here another minute. No? How did I know you weren't killed in an automobile accident? You were worried about me? Certainly. What would happen to me if something happened to you? Oh. While I'm in this house, your place is here. It's the last time you go out at night. There's no reason I shouldn't keep up my normal night life, is there? Andre Dawley is not normal. May I quote you? No man's normal when you're wearing that dress. <laughs> Drives you crazy, doesn't it? You better be careful. Marie Antoinette, Dubarry, Madame Pompadour, the wardrobe of those three women cost them their heads. A history lesson. I knew sometime or other you must have come within throwing distance of culture. If you refer to my education, I worked my way through university as a janitor. Ah. Ten to one you organized the janitors. That's right. I organized the students, too. You know, when you were a little boy, someone must have hurt you very badly. <laughs> Who was it? I never was a little boy. You're willing to boast, brag, anything, but talk about what's in there. The revolution's in there. Oh, no. No, it isn't. All the normal, healthy male instincts are in there. A little frustrated, perhaps, by Lenin, but with cultivation, you could be quite a man. How much champagne have you had tonight? Two glasses. Shall I get you some? You better go to bed. Here's your key. Good night. Look, I'm tired. Go to bed. staring at? That same little boy. You love my perfume, but you make me stand away and say that you hate it. What will you do with flowers after the revolution? 
put them in unions and forbid them their scent? What will you do with silkworms? Liquidate them for spinning material for gowns like this? And what will you do with me? Marianne, please go to bed. Killed? Including women, 19. No children? We don't count children. You're a liar and a fake. You never shot anyone. dress suit for a gun, it'll bulge. Let it bulge. All right, the police will see it. <coughs> Call the car, please, Doretta. Is Madame going out with him? Yes, Madame's smuggling me out of here in this suit. No sacrifice is too much to get out of this deluxe prison. But Madame, if he opens his mouth, we are lost. He's sure to make a speech. Here, put down that gun, put on that pop hat, and for heaven's sake, keep your mouth shut. You understand? Don't worry, I'll shut up. But I prefer to put my faith in this. Oh, well, give it to me. I'll carry it for you. And if anything happens, I'll save the last bullet for myself. Take my arm. Thank you, officer. We're far enough away from the house. Tell the driver to let me out on the side street. I was looking for a dark side street. Good. I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful. I know I've caused you a lot of trouble. Stop, please. I can stand anything, but you're trying to behave like a gentleman. This is dark enough. Would you mind telling him, please? Yes, that's right. Just press the button down there. Stop here. Well, I can go back to my little world, and you go back to your big one. Until the revolution? Goodbye. Just a minute. I want to tell you something. You're always talking about there being two kinds of people, the communists and the rich. Well, you're right. There are only two kinds of people, but they're not the two kinds that you talk about. They're just male and female. Goodbye. Pierre, the Moroc. Why are you hiding behind that fence? sent you living on my wife's street corners. I have a rendezvous with her, and the moment she appears, I'm going to shoot you. Lovely evening. Lovely evening. I've never considered you a mental giant, Duval, but even you should know that I'm not meeting Marianne on street corners. Lying won't save you. My detectives have informed me selecting your clothes. Oh, the lunacy commission would pass you with a perfect score. Don't deny it. I do deny it. The last woman to pick my clothes was my mother. It was my first pair of long trousers. Wait a minute. Did you say picking men's clothes? Size 42. I'm a 38. You mean... Duval, I'm afraid from a duet we've become a trio. Why, it's getting so a husband doesn't know who to shoot anymore. May I offer you a brandy? A brandy? Yes, by all means. 
We've been betrayed by a size 42. Is Madame ready for her dinner now? No, thank you. I'm still not hungry. No other experiences in organizing women? As a communist or as a male? Please, Paul, I've had enough of communism. And let's assume for tonight that the whole world has too. Were you ever in love? Or were you, Paul? Yes, once. What was she like? She's nothing like you. She was plump, had blonde hair, wore pigtails and lisp. Oh, no. She was older than I was. Oh, oh, the mother complex, I know. I was five and she was six. Well, the old hag. <laughs> what happened? Our parents broke it up. They felt we were too young for that sort of thing. At six? Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Shipped her off to a private kindergarten. No. I wonder where she is now. Probably still in kindergarten. <laughs> ever in love? Certainly not. Just married. <laughs> Good. Report to headquarters immediately. Tomorrow. What is it, Paul? Nothing, Marianne. Marianne, I... Well, a man knocks around and... Well... Yes? Well, sometimes it... Well, it gets pretty lonesome sometimes. Well, sometime or other, every man... Man, our soup's on the table. Headquarters immediately. Tomorrow, please. Thank you. You were saying something? Yes, I was saying something. I don't know why this speech would be so hard for me to make sort of in the spirit of unionization. Marianne, yes. your soup's getting cold, monsieur. Oh, the soup. Being married to a banker is, is grounds for divorce. Being married to a banker is grounds for divorce almost any place. <laughs> Headquarters, I... now. What is all this, Paul? Do you go now, comrade, or shall we notify the police? You're here and have them arrest you. I must report to headquarters once. I'll take you. No, no, you stay here and finish your dinner. I'll see you at home later. 
There's something I've got to tell you. Sometimes I think somebody should acquaint the Communist Party with the facts of life. Isn't Madame going to finish her soup? No. I'm not hungry again. Call my car, will you please? Do you know where the communist headquarters are? Why, madame, how should I know? Madame! Go there and wait for the gentleman who was with me this evening, then bring him to my home. I'll take a cab. Yes, comrade. Call me a taxi. He's coming. He's coming. Meeting call to order. Nicky. You sent for me? Yes. You will give yourself up to the police at once and confess attempting to assassinate Maurice Duval. You'll tell your story freely to the reporters. How hungry you were, how you were tempted, how you resisted for a while, then couldn't help yourself. You were hired by a rich woman. What rich woman? The wife of the banker Duval. But she helped me, hid me in her apartment. Let's say she harbored you. That's what you'll tell the papers. Why should you want to hurt an innocent woman whose only crime was to help a party member? Since when, Comrade Paul, have you taken to middle-class ethics? You never questioned the executive committee before? No, I never have. For 15 years I've obeyed, blindly. You had me work, lie, cheat, I've served in jail. I've been beaten up by special deputies with pick handles. I even attended a sarn feather party in America as the guest of honor. And now, in the name of communism, you want me to betray an innocent woman. The fact that she's a decent person doesn't seem to make any difference. Anything, just so the little red flag can continue to wave merrily in the breeze. Well, comrades, I refuse. But we'll strike two blows at once. One of poverty, and one of the corruption of rich wives. Make it three blows. Here's the extra one. The next time you make any plans for me, ask me first. Anarchist! You've made a mistake. You should have asked him first. Another traitor! Come on, come on. Good evening, messieurs. Stand by, officer. We may be able to throw some business your way. <laughs> oh, Loretta, how do I look? Like a woman who wants a man to propose to her. <laughs> what do I do if he doesn't propose? Well, you propose to him. Loretta. What have you got to lose? Only my self-respect. Oh, you're a young and beautiful woman. It's about time you lost it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Over there. Why? The light's better. <laughs> there. How's that? <laughs> Madame, he's got a gun! We've come to kill him. Where is he? Yes, where is he? What do you mean by forcing your way into my apartment? We represent the unwritten law. The coward is hiding. Search under the couch. Gentlemen, I was just about to retire. So won't you please go and play somewhere else? If you show me where he is, I'll kill him. Then we can all get some sleep. Very well. If you don't leave, I shall call the police. We have already notified the police. All we have to do is to provide the corpse. Size 42 corpse. The boys? For whom are you looking? For the man who broke his heart. 
Come on out. Be a man. Stop hiding behind women's skirts. You're drunk and shouldn't be allowed to handle a deadly weapon. Doretta, take it away from him. Who, me? Oh, oh. Come on out. Let me smell your breath. Oh, you're drunk. Give me the gun. If you two peeping toms are going to search, for heaven's sake, search quickly and get out! Man, don't lose your temper. Doretta, bring me a coat. Coat? Where are you going? We can't have a crime of passion without a woman. No. If you two won't get out of here, I will. You may stay in search if you like. As a matter of fact, you may stay the night. Doretta will fix you a bed right there on that couch and you can sleep upstairs. Or would you rather sleep together? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Madame, no. your coat. Thank you, Doretta. Good night, gentlemen. And if your feet get cold, there is a hot water bottle in the fourth drawer of the dresser. You're driving Madame out of her own house. Oh, oh Mary, 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 please don't go. Don't go. Well, you admit you have depraved imaginations? Yes. And you're satisfied there's no one here? Of course. Yes. Then may I presume this pleasant visit is over? Yes. Doretta, show these gentlemen to the door. Oh, wait. Uh, just to satisfy him, could I have one little peek at the bedroom? All right. Go and have your little peek, but hurry up. How I hate your husband. Stop that. You're drunk, too. Good night, monsieur. Andre, there's nobody there. Marianne, I feel that I should... I know. You apologize. You apologize, too, don't you? Well, that's fine. That takes care of the apology situation for tonight. Now, if you will just lean in opposite directions, you'll balance each other and make it safely. <laughs> Aren't you going to answer the bell, Marianne? Bell? Yes, the bell. I didn't hear any bell. Did you hear a bell, Doretta? Oh, no, madame. Oh, I, cause, uh, take him into the kitchen, get him some coffee. They're beginning to hear things. Aha, impatient sort of fellow, isn't he? We shouldn't <laughs> keep him waiting. <laughs> well, let's stop beating around the bush and open the door. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. I don't know who it is. It, it's the man next door. He has a fixation. He thinks every night is Halloween and goes around ringing everyone's doorbell. Uh, uh, <laughs> poor fellow. Take care of your wife. Marianne. Oh, Paul, don't come in. They have a gun. Amateurs shouldn't play with firearms. Don't be frightened. I came up here to say something to you tonight. I'm going to say it. Excuse us. I've seen him before. So have I. Do you remember what you said about there being only two kinds of people? Yes. A man and a woman? Oh, please, Paul, not now. There isn't time. You've got to get out of here. You can use the back stairs of the roof, but you've got to get away. Back stairs? The roof! My assassin! Police! The police will be up here in 30 seconds. The assassin's up here! Third floor! 30 seconds. I haven't time to make speeches now. Would you mind very much if I just said a simple I love you? No, I wouldn't mind. Oh, please, Ed. I love you. Darling. Give me that gun! Shh! It's beautiful. It's big on me. You must go now. Monsieur Duval, are you safe? There he is. Assassin, communist, bigamist. Take him out. I'll be down tomorrow and sign the charges. Yes, monsieur. done a decent thing in your life. Won't you please start now and do this one thing for me? Let him go! No. Please do, monsieur. Please. No! Andre, you have influence. You can get him out of the country. Why should I? Well, uh, I'd be in your debt eternally. I'm afraid it's a long wait to eternity. Maurice, you've always wanted me to come home. Not that, madame. 
Would you? Drop the charges. Oh, now, wait a second. I can help him escape. I can get him out of the country. If you escape, he'd still be a fugitive. I can get him free. Yes, I know you can. If I do, would you come home tonight? Yes. Yes. Doretta, pack my things. Who is it? Doretta, madame. Good morning, madame. Good morning, Doretta. I didn't sleep all night. I didn't either. Oh, madame, why do we women always get the short end? I don't know. Steak for breakfast? I had a wild hope he might drop in. Take it away, Doretta, before I begin to cry. She Duval asked me to give you this. Oh, it's Paul's official release. He's free. Also says where he lives. You better keep this. I made an agreement. Who is it? Maurice, your husband. Uh, what do you want? Please, Mary Ann, won't you at least let me come in and have my coffee with you? All right, open the door. I'd like to speak to Madame alone. Anything you have to say to me, baby, sit in front of Doretta. Mary Ann, you're being very unfair. You made a bargain with me last night. I made a bargain to come home, nothing else. Maybe I should have put everything in writing. I'm determined to win you back. We're leaving for Algiers tomorrow. You remember Algiers? We honeymooned there. And you opened a branch bank? Oh, yes, yes. And it's doing very nicely. From there, we go on to Egypt and the Nile. And the pyramids and the Sphinx. And there's an opening there for another branch, too. We're doing quite a bit of business with Egypt. Why transact through another bank? Of course, I'll be busy through the day. But I promise you, every evening we'll be together in the bazaars. Hand me my bag, Doretta. You have never drunk coffee in a bazaar, have you, Mary Ann? There's nothing like Egyptian coffee. It's thick and sweet. I wish I were going with you. You might not like America. Nah, only communists don't like America. Communists don't like any place where there's freedom for everybody. What fools we've been. Members of the Glorious Party. <laughs> we've been charter members of the Chumps Association, singing about freedom for the world. From now on, I'm going to be just a plain, ordinary, middle-class citizen. A snuff box, I. I want you to take it to remember me by. When you press the button, it plays the Marseillaise. <laughs> See? <laughs> no, 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 I couldn't think of it. It'll cheer you up. Carry it there, comrade. Not comrade. Friend. Well, Tronovich, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> See, already it cheers you up. Yeah. What's that? 
to somebody. Could it be me? No, I didn't do anything. There's no roof through there. Well, which way to the road? I show you. This may be it. She's getting her final divorce in two weeks. What's he saying now? He says he'll teach her the technique of being a lobster fisherman's wife. Now what's she saying? She says she'll learn easy. She's flexible. Drive round the park a couple of times. 